Assalamualaikum, hello everyone So welcome back to another video If you guys are new here, I'm Aiza of BPO Mom In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys my January reads So, in January, I have read 4,857 pages across 16 books You guys probably know that I do not have any system to my monthly wrap up video So, I'm just going from the top I have this basket full of books here Let's just get it started In case you missed my previous month wrap up videos, you can check it out over here the first book is Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney It came with these stunning postcards that I'm going to keep even though I'm not fond with the book So this book was published on 7 September 2021 which is last year And it's not my cup of tea at all um, Because it was missing the apostrophe for dialogues and it's really tiring to catch up It revolves around these four characters, I do not care anymore to remember their names basically they are having sex in every chapter and there's one particular scene that takes up until five pages they are having phone sex and they were talking about things that they would do when they meet each other the storytelling is very blunt and it's not even like plots driven or character driven so i have never dnf a book in my entire life until this book exists it is not my cup of tea and yeah the next two books that i read is in conjunction of january in japan last month the little book of ikigai the essential japanese way to finding your purpose in life by ken mogi another one is aku memoir dan rahsia oleh nurin inshira nurin inshira ni kalau korang tak tahu dia adalah booktuber termuda dalam persatuan booktube malaysia masa dia tulis buku ni dia berumur 14 tahun buku ni adalah cetakan yang pertama dan agak banyak kesalahan tata bahasa dan ejaan tapi kita boleh look past through that since ini adalah buku debut Nuruddin Syirah dan uh, cerita ni basically pasal Lisa yang dibawa oleh keluarganya untuk bercuti ke Jepun di sana dia bertemu dengan Obachan dan Hana masa dia sesat dekat satu building di mana macam anime ada tua lah dekat situ so dia terpisah lah dengan kakak dia Obachan dengan Hana dia orang pun bawa dia pergi ke rumah surprisingly dia orang pandai cakap Melayu sebab dia orang adalah uh, mu'alaf keesokan harinya dia orang bawa Lisa pergi Malaysian Ambassador dan dia orang di satukan semula disebabkan uh, Lisa dah selesa dengan Hana dan Obachan dia orang pun spend more time since uh, mak bapak Lisa ada urusan dekat Jepun lepas beberapa hari stay dekat rumah Obachan dan Hana dia pun dapat tahu satu rahsia besar dia pun melarikan diri dari rumah Obachan dan bertemu dengan Akiko dan Takashi uh, sepasang suami isteri yang pun surprisingly boleh bercakap Melayu. Lepas tu nyawa dia terancam. Dekat sinilah konflik yang terbesar berlaku. Aku suka sangat Nurin banyak letakkan konflik sebab that's what keep the story going on. So overall dia character dan plot driven. Banyak aksi yang mendebarkan dan aku suka cara Nurin masukkan backstory, backstory kisah Mak Silisa. Aku bagi buku ni tiga bintang. So the next book is The Little Book of Ikigai. There's five pillars of Ikigai according to this book. Pillar number one, starting small. Number two, releasing yourself. Number three, harmony and sustainability. Number four, the joy of little things. Number five, being in the here and now. While having a mindset that potentially change life is called Ikigai, Practicing it supposedly could make lives more fulfilling and the people healthy, right? The knowledge reading uh, Ikigai is a stark contrast from what maybe most of us have known of the way the Japanese who mostly from the big cities live in their life. Like maybe it's too much news, I don't know. But um, hearing from my own brother who has been living there for two years the japanese are very hard working they are workaholics and, and they have like less public holidays this book coming from a japanese writer ikigai is such a familiar way of life or way of thinking to live on life i came to a conclusion that it might have a slightly different meanings to each one of us but to sum it off it is about living life uh, appreciatively mindfully and gratefully Although I appreciate all the insights that I got from this book, I think it's lacking of clarity what it 
initially wants to give the, to the reader it gives you the tools to make the most of every day when you read this you still need time to figure it out for yourself I give this book a three stars. Buku seterusnya adalah Siri oleh Ustaz Pahrul Muhammad Juoi. Yang pertama adalah Bawa Cinta Kita Ke Syurga. Yang kedua adalah Merawat Cinta Dalam Rumah Tangga. Buku pertama ni lebih kepada yang bakal mendirikan rumah tangga dan baru saja uh, mendirikan rumah tangga. Dan bagi yang belum ada matlamat yang jelas kenapa mereka mendirikan rumah tangga, kenapa nak kahwin dan belum ada niat ataupun nak meluruskan niat Korang kena baca yang ni. Ini adalah bacaan pertama 2022 aku yang sangat bermanfaat sebab aku niat nak baca banyak lagi buku tentang perkahwinan dan parenting walaupun aku dah kahwin selama 9 tahun tapi aku rasa ilmu-ilmu begini perlu sentiasa perlu ada untuk menyuburkan rumah tangga, cara aku mendidik anak dan sebagainya. Buku ni insya-Allah boleh menyedarkan kita bahawa cinta saja memang tak cukup menjadi satu alasan untuk mendirikan rumah tangga so aku ada sikit ringkasan daripada pembacaan aku iaitu um, dari muka surat 150 hingga 152 sebab kata pepatah Arab seseorang itu menjadi hamba kepada apa atau siapa yang dicintainya ada isteri yang sudah semakin toleransi dalam hukum penutupan aurat malangnya si suami biarkan saja tudungnya yang semakin singkat sendat melekat Tangan yang terlihat, helayan rambutnya sedikit berjuntayan, solat pasangan sudah mula culas, tidak tetap waktu dan terlalu ringkas pula. Didiamkan si suami kerana terlalu sayang. Lepas tu ada yang suami pergi ke kuliah agama, bersedekah dan berdakwah, tapi lama-lama semangat dia makin merudum. Si isteri tak menegur kerana terlalu sayang. Lepas tu anak tak nak bangun surat subuh uh, sebab kesian nanti mengantuk. Dan tak nak puasa, dibiarkan oleh mak bapak sebab nanti takut lapar dan dahaga. Tak diceritakan, tak dididik pentingnya semua ni, pentingnya ibadah-ibadah ini kerana apa? Terlalu sayang. Betul lah kata pepatah Arab tadi kan? Ada satu kuat untuk yang ni, sedikit ibu bapa terpesona dengan dunia, anak-anak akan terleka dalam mencintainya. Buku yang kedua iaitu merawat cinta dalam rumah tangga sequel ni adalah memfokuskan tentang rawatan kepada keretakan rumah tangga dengan menelusuri makna cinta yang sebenarnya kalau rasa perkahwinan tu tawar dah makin hilang serinya bolehlah baca buku ni ni adalah antara nota saya walaupun mencintai diri sendiri itu penting setelah berkahwin kita perlu belajar berkongsi kasih kasihkan diri, pasangan dan kemudiannya anak-anak Jangan bahagikan cinta tapi kongsikan cinta Cinta pada manusia itu boleh membunuh keimanan Apabila cinta pada pasangan melebihi cinta pada sang pencipta cinta itu sendiri Ia membinasakan Mintalah dan berilah kemaafan kepada pasangan sebelum tidur Agar hati tenang tanpa dendam Susah tapi perlu Jika kesalahannya terlalu besar Cuba hadapi dengan tenang dan selesaikan dengan cara dan jalan yang betul Buku ni masing-masing RM30 Kalau dibuat macam satu buku Nipis je kan Tapi dua bahagian Mungkin boleh letak harga RM45 ke RM40 Ianya akan jadi macam sangat padat Sebab ada isinya yang berulang Aku bagi buku ni Tiga bintang Buku seterusnya adalah Big Hug Series The Parenting Little Library Dari Adlil Rajiah So dalam box set ni Ada empat buku semuanya Buku pertama adalah Tiga kertas, tiga krayon, tiga pensel warna Tentang perjalanan Puan Rajah sendiri dalam membesarkan anaknya Banyak parenting guide dalam ni Early education for children Kita selalu fikir kan, kenapa anak orang tak ketagih gadget? Kenapa anak aku ketagih gadget? Kenapa aku rasa macam anak orang lain lebih baik daripada anak aku? Aku orang kena baca ni, buku nombor satu ni Lepas tu buku yang kedua adalah Why So Serious Parents Anak tumpahkan air sikit, kurang terus meradang, sikit-sikit nak marah. Selalulah sakit jiwa kan sebab anak-anak. So, kalau korang tak nak serius sangat, nak jadi parents yang fun, korang kena baca. Am I fun? Ha, yeah, it's fun. Bila baca buku ni, korang insya Allah boleh uh, nampak lah korang punya end goal. Korang nak korang jadi parents yang macam mana. Yang aku suka tentang penulisan Ad Adli Rajah ni, dia sangat lucu guys. Rasa macam bercakap dengan kawan sendiri je. Macam cakap dengan member, tengah luahkan perasaan. Aku sukalah gaya bahasa yang digunakan. Tapi ada jugalah mencarut-carut which is 
maybe a little unnecessary buku nombor tiga parents welcome to my world ah yang ni kita nak dive in kita nak selam dunia kanak-kanak bila baca buku ni kita boleh memahami psikologi anak-anak dan seterusnya kita akan boleh lebih menghargai mereka yang aku suka dalam ni tak silap aku ada satu carta jenis-jenis kepintaran yang ada pada manusia ada yang pandai buku korang tahu kan pandai buku ada yang pandai muzik ada yang uh, intra ataupun interpersonal yang orang boleh memahami orang lain ataupun memahami diri sendiri so anak-anak kita ni ada kepintaran dan kepandaian yang berbeza-beza bila kita ada ilmu yang tertentu kita pun boleh menghargai anak-anak tak adalah kita macam emosi sangat kan bila anak tak pandai buku uh, takkanlah semua anak ada kepandaian yang sama untuk lebih memahami orang. Walaupun kita ni orang dewasa yang pernah mengalami sendiri zaman kanak-kanak Tak semestinya kita boleh faham kanak-kanak bila kita dah dewasa tahu tak baca buku ni So buku keempat ni adalah buku mutiara kata lah buku quotes Yang dia kutip daripada buku-buku sebelumnya tadi So bagi aku biasa je dekat internet tu ada dalam ni Tapi disebabkan dia dalam box set memang adalah sekali kan kalau korang beli box set tu bukan ada tu je tapi ada bookmarks yang berbeza untuk buku 1, 2, 3 dan 4 lepas tu ada thank you card dan last sekali ada carta reward chart Ah tak tahulah aku nak guna ke tak aku hanya guna reward chart masa bulan ramadan dan aku tak bagi macam benda material untuk anak aku dan untuk daily basis aku tak guna sangat sebab Aku rasa psikologi kanak-kanak tu berbeza Sebab tu lah korang kena baca buku parenting yang berbeza Dan cuba uh, aplikasikan kepada anak Sebab tak semua anak sama kan So bagi Adil Rajah Dia sangat uh, syurkan untuk mak bapak Buat reward chart macam ni Kalau macam aku tak sangat lah Sebab aku rasa macam tak sesuai dengan anak aku Dia akan macam lebih menunggu-nunggu reward Atas benda yang dia buat untuk daily basis kan Overall aku bagi siri ni 4 bintang the next book is The Eighth Girl by Maxine Mei Fung Chong. Before I begin with this review, I would uh, point it out that there is this trigger warnings. Rape, incest, children, sex trafficking and sexual abuse. Uh, so the main character is Alexa Wu. She has nine personas including herself, the nest builder. Uh, she, the nest builder, is being manipulated by all these personas. She has one best friend which is Ella who is very understanding and then there is Anna, her stepmom that's a little bit creeped out by uh, her condition but still are loving and very caring towards her. She's the one who set her up with her therapist. When Alexa's best friend Ella got this job at this high-end club that ended up uh, sex trafficking little children, they began their quest to expose the club owner. That's the whole plot about that. This is my thoughts on this book. My favorite persona would be Dolly, uh, the little girl that I assume Alexa has created when she was a little girl. She is um, Alexa's side that is sweet, caring, honest, and kind. There's three personas that the author trying to hide at the beginning of the book but it's all disclosed uh, at the end of the chapter. I am not a little bit surprised because I have guessed who is the persona number six, seven and eight. So you know it should have these surprise elements but it does not at all. It's, it's really easy to guess. I can say I was a bit uh, disappointed by that. It's a slow paced story but some of the plots are gripping enough for me to keep on going and i rated this book 2.5 stars which is um an okay for a debut one more thing i am utterly disgusted by daniel alexa's therapist who always have this kind of wild imagination and thoughts like sexually thinking about alexa it's really uncomfortable and i don't think that it is one thing that the writer should put in the story because I don't know the whole chapter uh, of Daniel's point of view is useless the next book is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak this is my very first book from Elif Shafak and it's not going to be just the, the first and the last I give this a 4.5 stars it is an earth shattering read I assure you to get this book it is the most interesting book that I have read in years so trigger warning there's depression suicide and war 
so the plots are really structured and beautiful written i can say cursive even but i wish to feel melancholic but i did not it, it just didn't reach me like emotionally so basically um there is this tavern where a love between a christian greek and a muslim turkish blossom it is owned by these beautiful guys i cannot remember their names but uh, they ran this tavern it's like a macam mana eh? cafe kalau tak silap so there is a magical fig trees inside the tavern that hurt a lot of things she can uh, yes it's a she this pig is a she she can sense emotions she can smell people's scent she can hear what the people are talking about and she witnessed so many things and know a lot of secrets the fig tree or knows this secret by listening by herself from the human animals and insects many years later this half greek half turk was born and her name is Ada so, so she became the main character um, the POV in this book switches between Ada and the fig tree and also first point of view if not mistaken as she grows older she really long to know about her parents roots where their love begins how did they remain together despite the odd I cannot convince you anymore to read this book just look at that tabbings I'm going to read more of Elif Shafak's. Three days later, I'm not explaining what happened here, but okay, let's just go on with it. The next book is Mrs. England by Stacey Hall. I can say that she is now my favorite woman historical fiction author. I have read all of her books. The Familiars is the first book, Foundling is second, Mrs. England is third. They are not series, they are standalone. Mrs. England, I guess this of four stars. The story follows a children nurse named Ruby May who had suffered from her childhood trauma that contributed to her love and determination towards becoming a children nurse to love and take care of children. She then takes a position looking after the England's children. They have three children which is Decca, Millie and Charlie. Her master Charles England, he's always cheerful, charming, respectful and kind whilst uh, the mistress Lillian she is always depressed and kept to herself she rarely went into the children room or takes care of them or like interacted with them and it's just a little bit sus there's actually more than what meets the eye there's no perfect family at all this is kind of book that usually you want to read during rainy days with a cup of coffee next to a, a huge window because it is very comfy it's a comfy read there's adequate amount of suspense in this book um i love all the plot twist it is a character driven and plot driven book if i were to rank this books by stacy halls i would say please read the foundling it is the greatest among all of her books and going back to mrs england i'm a bit disappointed by this book because it doesn't have a map in there unlike the families and the foundling they both have a maps which i really think uh it's one of added values i would really appreciate if she consistently put maps on all of her books so ruby may the nurse is a highly likable character very determined strong kind and non-judgmental person i don't want to spoil the story for you guys but i really love mrs england let's just appreciate the pretty covers the next book is the sun and her flowers by rupi Carr. i gave this a three stars so um split into five chapters which is wilting falling rooting rising and blooming the sun and her flowers is a collection of poetry about grief self-abandonment honoring one's roots love and empowering oneself this is the second book by her that i've read the first one is homebody and i can say to you guys that i have a love-hate relationship with her i love the majority of her poetry in here but i really dislike uh, the ones about masturbation the, the sexual intercourse and all but my favorite section would be blooming if i'm not mistaken where she talks about her roots life choices embracing her cultures and uh, self-love her words can 
really be uh, relatable and empowering she talks a lot about immigrants i think i have a favorite in here why is it that when the story ends we begin to feel all of it that's genius the next book is Diagnosis Apocalypse written by various doctors. So um, in late December 2014 till early January 2015, Malaysia witnessed one of its worst flood disasters in history. So I read this last month which is January 2022 after one of the greatest flood I assume that happens in places especially Shah Alam that rarely become that disastrous. That was the first time I ever seen Shah Alam, Taman Sri Muda got flooded that bad so it's important for them to document all these historical events you know these doctors really have talents in writing are sharing fictionalized accounts of their own work experiences and real life events during the disasters let me be honest with you guys if you are feeling rather sad or depressed right now don't read this book not because that it, this is a bad book it is a great book i love reading this one the doctors are very talented in retelling the events during the flood because it is so sad especially if you guys are from the area that has been flooded you might not be fully recovered from that traumatic event so just stay away from this at the moment overall this is such a great read um like i almost feel that i am living in the moment through these pages it's really heartbreaking and my heart goes to all of those victims i would highly recommend this book guys the next one is the monk who sold his ferry by robin sharma i felt to see what the hype is all about i gave this book a uh, three stars so this is a collector's edition it comes with this mp3 cd i have not listened to this maybe someday in my car it's a fable about fulfilling your dreams and reaching your destiny so in short uh, robin has one friend named julian um he was a lawyer and suddenly one day he just decided to abandon his wealth career and start his quest in finding a life full of peacefulness when julian experienced a bad health he got heart attack that was his turning point into living his life more mindfully and meaningfully bagi aku lah kan kalau kau kaya kau boleh je abandon kau punya career something in this book doesn't make sense something in julian's story doesn't make sense but i'm pretty sure that a lot of other people around the world would appreciate this so here's the seven timeless virtues of enlightened living number one master your mind number two follow your purpose number three practice kaizen number four live with discipline number five respect your time number six selflessly serve others number seven embrace your present since i don't really have goal for 2022 not just not because i reach so many of those in 2021 but i want to prioritize other stuff in my life more um at some point i almost feel that this book is really motivating but the one thing that i love about this book is in every chapter the last page there is summary to everything and there's like this little illustration i fell to see the hype <laughs> The next book is Frankly In Love by David Yoon. Uh, this was gifted by Pei a couple of years ago for Christmas. I have read uh, I have read Super Fake Love Song by David Yoon also and I am loving this. I gave Frankly In Love a 3.5 stars. So it follows Frankly who came from a highly racist Korean family living in America. Um, they kind of marries with each other in their own Korean community because they want to expand their community so he have a sister named Hana who was disowned by the family because she was dating a white or black guy I can't remember so as I predicted Frank to fall in love fell in love with a white girl but he didn't tell his parents otherwise he would get disowned like his 
sister. Each month, uh, their family has the gatherings where they can spend time with each other and encourage their kids to fall in love with each other. Joy Song is a girl whom Frank known his entire life from these gatherings. She is dating a Chinese guy named Wu. Joy Song and Frank Lee, they kind of fake date each other so they can go on a date with their real date. You guys catching this? This book is embroidered uh, with humor, especially between Frank and his black best friend named Q. They are both geniuses and I found myself snorting and laughing all the times. I think their internal jokes really gets me all the time. The conflicts happen when something unexpected happened to his father, Frank's father, and he discovered his actual feelings towards someone. Why did I give this a 3.5 stars instead of 4 if I really like it? One of the main reasons is because it is highly predictable. It doesn't ruin the whole thing for me but because I really enjoy it is one of the fluffy read, one of those feel good read when your mind are packed with uh, non-fiction books. This is such a great getaway in terms of reading. It's just highly predictable. Why? I cannot say that I'm disappointed by my ability to expect these things. I enjoy it thoroughly. I guess it's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys do, please thumbs up and subscribe. I see you in the next one. Bye. Assalamualaikum.